we do not want more, but less Islam. So I rather uh, would have um, no Quran um, at all. Shut down mosques and ban the Quran. I was brought up in a very Protestant environment, very strong, strict Protestant environment, especially the tradition. It's not so much that my family was very, very strong, but uh, when I compare it to other people we were, and, and I was brought up and born in Amsterdam, so there's a pretty liberal context, so the contrast was pretty big sometimes. Um, but um, uh, I, I was kind of a nerdy guy as well, so I read a lot of books. So and uh, I read books from Martin Luther, uh, Swingley, Calvin, and all those uh, persons wrote about Islam as well, uh, or uh, about the Ottoman Empire back then. And they said, well, that's our historical enemy. And back then, of course, it was their uh, lifetime enemy. Uh, but what was the big difference? Of course, they were Christians and the Ottoman Empire was, uh, was Muslim. So they wrote about Islam from a very negative point of view, but I absor absorbed it and I, 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 I took it for, for something true. Uh, and of course then in 2001 was the first day I went to college. It was uh, me, I, I studied comparative religion at the Free University. And that first day was September 11, 2001. So the attack on the World Trade Center. So I already had this bias and then of course, I saw these guys flying into buildings. I thought, okay, they, those people are even more crazy than I thought. And then there was this famous filmmaker, Theo van Gogh. In 2004, he was killed. They slid his throat, shot him in the street, and the guy who did it called himself a jihadi. And then I said, it was near my old house. I said, well, I have to do something to protect the country against this, this crazy ideology, these crazy people. So I have to go into politics because there I can be the most effective. Uh, and then I joined uh, Wilders' party, of course. And um, yeah, well, when I when I was in in the party, um, of course, I was very anti-Islam, but uh, I was also Christian. And when I was younger, I had these questions about, let's say, the Trinity, original sin, uh, atonement. Uh, and I had some doubts because I, I thought it was not so logical. But I, uh, when I asked ministers for explanations, they they couldn't give me satisfying answers. So I thought, well, perhaps I'm not just not smart enough. So I let it for what it was. And then when I was uh, in my 30s, of course, I started writing this book. But those questions popped up again. So I thought, oh yeah, there was this concept of the Trinity that I couldn't cope with in a way. And then I saw Tawhid, and of course I knew it for my studies, but it was always like an object of study. It was not a real alternative for the truth with a capital T. But now it was, because I thought, well, it looks more logical in a way. And then I compared it to the Jewish Bible, let's say part one of the, the, the Christian Bible, the, the Old Testament. And I thought, well, it's the same as what they say. And then I thought, just look at the, the quotes of Jesus Christ. And, and then there's this parable, he, he, he has this conversation with a man and he asked him, what can I do, uh, Jesus, to gain paradise? How do I go into heaven? He said, well, there are two things. Sounds e uh, it's easy, but it's pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, difficult sometimes. And then he uh, repeats Shema, and that's in the Jewish tradition. They say, oh Lord, oh Israel, your Lord, God is one. And I thought, well, if even Jesus Christ talks about one God, and I see the Old Testament people talking about one God, and the Muslims talk about one, perhaps there is some truth in this one God concept as the Muslims present it. So that's how it started. And uh, I still had this uh, distinction between me and the Muslims because of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I thought, okay, at least I'm not a Muslim. <laughs> But I had to write about him as well, of course, to, to show what is the big difference between us and them. And I, I didn't have enough information, so I started to write several authorities on Islam. And one of the people I wrote to was Abdul Hakim Murad from Cambridge University. And he said, well, I get the point, you're very anti, etc., etc., but it, it's not true. That's, that's basically it. So he said, well, you have to reread all your old books. And if you reread all, all your old books, you have to read these articles, these books as well. And he said, well, then you can see how the, the Orientalists and the people who weren't Muslim wrote about Islam in the past, and still they do, from a non-Muslim perspective. So he said, you get another story. They add some things, they left some things out. It's not always on purpose, but it, that's just what happened. So you almost get two Islams, 
of course, there is just one Islam. I said, this is the Islam of how the Orientalists say Islam is and the real deal. And he said, you're looking for the real deal because you want to write a book based on facts and truth. And then I started re reading about his life of the prophet and I saw him for the first time as a, as a man and as, as, as a father and a husband and, and, and a teacher. And, and it, uh, like it was like a complete new person for me. And so, well, this is a very inspiring person. So that's how it started. And when I, uh, in the end, um, uh, came across the story of Hint, and of course, people know the story better than I do, but uh, she was uh, like the wife of Abu Sufyan. It was a very uh, strong enemy of Islam. Uh, she gave money to kill the favorite uncle of the Prophet Hamza in the battlefield, and after that they cut off his ears and nose and start parading with it. So I thought it was a horrible thing. And I was reading this book, and I thought, okay, now years and years later, Muhammad came into power in Mecca. And, but Hint was still there, so I thought, okay, now she gets killed. Now she gets crucified or her head cut off or whatever. So I was really looking for that part. But then, uh, in, in, in the story, they said, well, uh, they, they bring the news to Muhammad. They said, well, Hint is still here. What do we do with her? And they said, well, bloodshedding is over. So everybody who wants to stay, stay. This, these are the new rules. If you don't want to stay, go. But no more revenge. So, and I said, I cannot look at her right now. But in the end, she became Muslim as well. So I thought, well, it's very, yeah, I, I thought it was very special if someone who kills your relatives, your favorite uncle, and you have the ability to kill that person or take revenge in, in whatever way, but you don't. And I thought, well, I had this m an image of him in my mind as like the, almost the antichrist, and now I see him acting like, like, like almost a savior. And I thought, well, that, that man is someone else. We try to do everything against Islam, so we try to push legislation to, to shut down all Islamic schools in the Netherlands, ban uh, hijab, uh, the Quran, uh, close Islamic schools, well, everything you can imagine. Uh, but at one point I, uh, I left the party because we got into this argument about uh, Moroccan people because they said uh, during a, r a rally uh, in election time, he asked uh, people, do you want more or less Moroccans in the Netherlands? And everybody started shouting, less, less, less. And he said, well, I'll make that happen if you vote for me. And I, th and I wasn't in the rally, but I was the spokesperson in Parliament. So I said, what, is this something new? And he said, well, no, that's not something new. It's like an extension of what we do. And I said, well, that's not my extension. So we got into this argument, said, well, I'm very anti-Islam, and I want to fight the ideology of Islam, as I called it back then, but I'm not per se against Moroccan people or Belgian people or whatever. So um, we started arguing and said, well, you have to add something to it to give it more context, so to say, so I, I can sell it. In, in Parliament, but he said, no, this is it. Uh, so you have to change your mind. I said, well, I, I cannot change my mind on this. And I said, well, we have to. And I said, well, I, I don't. And if you don't change it, I'll leave. He said, well, you won't leave. But I did leave. And then I finally had the time to fulfill a long-held desire, and I was writing my anti-Islam book, because in, in the Freedom Party, Geert Wilders, he was, so to say, the poster boy of the anti-Islam movement. And, uh, and he was the guy who wrote the books. But it was always like very superficial, it was always like the one-liners you have to sell for the news, etc. Et so I said, I want a real, a real book with, with like an academic explanation of why we think Islam is a real danger. Uh, and that's, that's how it started. And then I started <laughs> writing my anti-Islam book, but of course I, it took a, a direction that I didn't chose, uh, especially not in the beginning, and it ended up with me becoming a Muslim.